What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we've got a big one. If you're a fan of Shroud, then you know this has been a long time coming. Today, we're going to be checking out and reviewing the brand new Logitech G303 Shroud Edition Wireless Gaming Mouse. This has been something fans have been asking for for years now, especially over the last six months or so when we started seeing some leaks pop up here and there, but it's finally out. So the story with this and how it's become so popular and relevant again is Logitech originally launched the G303 Daedalus Apex back in 2015 for $70. And it was nothing special at the time and didn't really sell too well. It wasn't until Shroud started streaming full time and obviously he's grown quite the name for himself over the last few years, but that was the mouse he used and would dominate with during streams and fans that would try to buy the Daedalus Apex, which was then discontinued, would see prices for it skyrocket up to $400 on eBay and people were actually paying that. Now, fast forward, it's the end of 2021, they teamed up and re-released a brand new updated version made entirely with Shroud's input and his hand size in mind. Yes, more on that note in a minute. But taking a look at it, there are some minor visual changes to this brand new updated release. This 74 gram wireless variant ditches cables and touts their hyperspeed technology and the Hero sensor. All updates that are miles ahead of the 2015 version, and hey, we actually have USB-C on a Logitech mouse, finally. Then real quick, just to show you a physical side-by-side, -side, as I said earlier, this mouse was made specifically for Shroud's hand shape and size, so we do have some differences in terms of the actual dimensions, and now there's no RGB this time around. They market it at 75 grams, although on my scale it comes in just at 74 like I mentioned, which I think in terms of the current mouse market, it's still light, yes, definitely, but more so medium size versus others out there right now. It's 117 millimeters long, stands 23 millimeters at the front flare, and is 40 millimeters tall at its highest point. And in terms of width, the middle grip on the top of the shell is 70 millimeters, and towards the bottom where your fingertips grip it is 63 millimeters. Now, it may be minor, but this mouse is slightly larger in almost every dimension versus the original G303. Is that going to turn some people away? Probably not, because the changes are small. But yeah, it is actually larger, because they fit it to fit his hand size, his grip, where his thumb sits, all that stuff. So they really tailored it to Shroud. Do we all have the same hand size as Shroud? No, but hey, at least we actually have it now. They also said they changed where the switches are positioned inside. Now it feels like they're more in line with the scroll wheel versus on the original Geo 3, it was more in line with the top of the scroll wheel. So they're seated a little bit back. Definitely feels right, I'd say. And just a note real quick, I do wish the scroll wheel was textured instead of the smooth rubber. Now it's not a big deal or anything because it is still rubberized. I just like that extra, you know, tangible texture on a scroll wheel, but that's just me. I'm not shroud. Uh, now, with all that in mind, we'll do a sound test so you can hear how the G303 sounds. Altogether, it's a very solid and compact build. No squeaking, no rattling to the mouse anywhere, no post or pre-travel anywhere, not on the side buttons, not in left and right clicks. A very, very good job in terms of construction. And as for the switches inside, they don't really mention it anywhere, but I think it's safe to say they're using those same um, Omron 20 mils that we saw on last year's G Pro X Superlight. And next up, speaking of which, the coating here is that same matte texture from the G Pro Superlight. It's soft to the touch, but it will pick up easily on some fingerprint oils and smudges. Um, it does feel smooth though, but you know, usually any marks will wipe off pretty easily with your shirt or some sort of microfiber cloth. The left and right sides of the mouse are made up of this slightly transparent plastic, which is a shame they ditched RGB because it probably would have looked really nice and diffused here, but I get it. They favor battery life and having RGB only would have worsened it. Now, one of the more questionable design choices here is the magnetic USB drawer on the back underside of this mouse. This is where you can store the wireless dongle if you're bringing it somewhere. But to me, this is just a wasted space with extra added materials only adding to the overall weight. I much prefer that hollow cutout under a mouse that you see on some razor mice, for example. You can choose to just completely remove the butt plug. It does come out with some force. And you'll see inside there's that little magnet, but now you just have this big gaper on the back and it's not nice to look at, you know, with this big hole in the back. Honestly, I really don't like this decision by Logitech. 
taking the drawer out completely will bring the mouse down to 72 grams so again you're gonna cut down a little bit of weight but you're just gonna have that hole in the back side so it's up to you they really just should have threw in a little cover or something then real quick before we move on underneath is your zero additive ptfe feet it's that same 100 pure feet we've seen on the g pro x super light last year we have two large pads on the top and bottom then one ring around the sensor and for that sensor logitech is still using their own hero 25k dpi it goes from um, 100 to 25,600 dpi and the hero sensor is also designed with conserving power as one of its strong points because this is rated for up to 145 hours of use Again, while having RGB would have looked nice, you'd realistically be looking at around 80 hours max then. So, my personal opinion and experience, and I'll say, right out of the box, when I first, you know, got it out, held it and looked at it, I was very, very skeptical of this shape. Remember, the original G303 didn't sell too well at all. That got discontinued pretty quickly because the shape was just so different from the usual, you know, ambi mice out there, and it's not, you know, ergo in that sense, um, it just didn't fit a lot of people's grip, but now you fast forward a few years and this shape something about it It is perfect. Like I said, I was very very skeptical, but the grip is just so Natural now, you know by community terms. It is an ambidextrous mouse, but by definition this is a hundred percent ergonomic especially for a claw grip or fingertip grip users for me, I usually have like a hybrid of claw and fingertip. You really cannot palm this mouse comfortably at all. Just the way you have the curvature underneath the top shell where it goes down, that is perfect to fit your fingers. It is insane how comfortable this mouse is, and I get it now. I get why Shroud used this and loved it, because it is perfect for that grip. Now I will say it does feel a bit back heavy. It's not perfectly balanced, I'd say. Um, if you give the mouse like a nice glide on your mouse pad, again with the zero additive PTFE feet, it's a nice smooth glide, but the mouse will sort of like spin out a little bit because the back of the mouse, you know, where the hips are, where it starts to bow out, it does feel a bit heavier back there. That's not a big deal because again, depending on your grip and your play style, um, that might be a good thing. I know for me, like when I'm playing Battlefield, the new Battlefield 2042 just came out. And if I'm, you know, like running and gunning and stuff, I'm um, having that extra sort of, you know, feeling of weight in the back is great for controlling recoil and stuff. Cause I don't need to do a quick drastic, you know, drag down to control my shots. But man, I'm telling you guys from being super skeptical to super on the boat, I hundred percent love the shape of this mouse. I really didn't think I would. I really didn't. Now, if you're curious about software, it's still compatible with their G-Hub software from Logitech, um, but it's not required. You know, it's not like a Razer mouse. It's not necessary by any means. In fact, I don't even have it downloaded because since I had this mouse before its initial release, it doesn't pop up in G-Hub, so I didn't use it at all. But in there is where you can control the DPI and, you know, uh, adjust your pulling rate, all that stuff. It's a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, adjust all that. And um, again, if you want to charge it, we finally have USB-C, but the battery life, as I said, 145 hours is fantastic. Really loving my time with this. So again, a new updated wireless version, USB-C, Omron 20 mil switches. We get better feet than the original, great battery life because of no RGB. They're doing some really, really great stuff with this. In terms of cons, I can sort of, you know, rehash what I said before. I do wish the scroll wheel had some texture to it. Just my personal preference. And this butt plug just isn't it, Logitech. This is just too much wasted materials. Would have been great if we could have had some cover to put on here to take this out. Or like you see on, you know, like I said, razor mice, it's hollowed out underneath. There's that little uh, cap you put over it and you're all good. Would have preferred to see that now. This does come in at 129.99 MSRP, so 130. You would have loved to have seen this for 99.99, right? Because you take a look, even the G Pro X Super Light, that was 150 when it launched, but it was lighter than this. This at 74 grams, like I said, it's that, it's that middle point in the mouse community. So I think 130 is just a little bit too high. That's that shroud tax though, okay? I don't know what kind of cut he's getting, but 130, should have been 100 shroud tax. Do I recommend it? Yes. Do I love it? Yes. Will this sell like hotcakes when it comes out because of his fan base, people who've been waiting for this new re-release? Yes. I get it, Logitech. 
I get it. Great stuff here. So guys, that'll wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll have it listed for you in the description down below. If you have any questions, let me know. Drop a comment down below. Anything I didn't address, I'll answer your questions about the new Geo 3. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.